All right, you'll have to pardon the noise factor. I'm in a small bedroom that has an air conditioner in it. Um, it. It isn't quite enough to keep the computer room cool, but it can keep this little bitty tiny bedroom cool. So, I just wanted to mention how I was able to upgrade to Windows 10. Uh, there's been a lot of confusion, and uh, there's a link that I'll leave in the description bar that should let you download the tool that lets you uh, download the ISO or put it on a thumb drive or just flat out upgrade. Now if you want to do a clean install of Windows 10 but it's an upgrade you've got to go through a number of steps which is kind of silly that they've done this but that's the way that it is. Um, First, I recommend either using the tool to put the specific version that you need of uh, Windows 10 onto a DVD or a thumb drive. Um, you need to make sure that you choose the same uh, the same version as what it is you're using. Let's say if it's Windows 8, let's say if you're using Windows 8 Pro, you need to you, you need to choose Windows 10 Pro. Uh, Windows 10 Pro N is basically the same Windows 10 but with a number of the apps uh, removed. They're, they're, they're not there. They don't come with it. Like photos, uh, TV and movies, uh, there's a couple others that won't be there. And if you prefer to use desktop apps for everything versus modern apps, even though the modern apps don't have to switch to a completely different screen, if you just want desktop apps for that, then and you never want to use the modern apps, then go for the N version. Um, now I haven't tried it personally, but that is what the N version is supposed to be. So um, put that onto a DVD or a thumb drive, and then after you have that, after you've accomplished that, then start your upgrading. Well, I mean you're gonna. It's probably best if you try to back up your stuff. You know. Now, I haven't had to worry that much because I have all of my important information on a separate drive that, you know, I can wipe the main drive and it doesn't affect any of my stuff. I mean, it'll wipe the programs, obviously, but it's not going to wipe, you know, my files that I've made. So, um, so you know, do your backups if you need to, and then start the upgrade. And it'll take a little while, and it'll ask you some questions here and there, and uh, eventually it will uh, it'll restart, and it'll give you this uh, black screen with light gray graphics and text. Uh, upgrading Windows. It's what I saw every time there was a new build of the um, Insider Edition, Insider Preview of uh, Windows 10. Every time they had a new, a new uh, build, I would go through that process again. Now, because of what I had experienced with doing all those upgrades at different times, I really do recommend, if you can, to do a clean install of Windows 10 because there can be some things that are just that don't quite transfer right. But if you don't want to spend the time to do that, you know, you can try doing the upgrade and hope that everything works out all right. Um, and then it'll ask you a series of questions. And, uh, uh, I, I can't remember the, the, how a lot of them are worded. Just answer them to what you want your computer to be like. And then once, uh, once it's fully upgraded, and you have your desktop and uh, and all of that. At that point, um, you can then put in the media that uh, you use the tool that I'm leaving in the description bar to put this uh, to put these uh, the, the the copy of of the installation of uh, the installer for Windows 10 onto restart your computer, boot up to that device, and uh, with that device I should say, and 
and, and go from there. And then when it asks you to put in your key, you say skip. And it will ask you to put your key in twice. Once in the initial interface, and then once when you have the... Well, it was blue on my screen, kind of an aqua-ish blue color on my screen. It might be different on yours. Um, but once you get to the other looking interface, it'll ask you one more time to put in the key. You say skip. And then later it will ask you to put your Microsoft account in. Now, I think that they are requiring that you, in order to do this upgrade, you have to have been logged into uh, your Microsoft account. Now, don't quote me on this, uh, but I have, I think that is what they've been requiring. How this applies to Windows 7, I don't know. I don't know how that works. The one that I know about is from upgrading from Windows 8. So, um, so once you put your name in, your, your, your login credentials for your Microsoft account, um, it will continue on, and uh, when you eventually get to your desktop, you can go check, and you'll pretty much find that your product is activated. And it's based on your Microsoft account, to my knowledge. This is, this is everything that I've read about it, and it's the way that it worked for me. Um, if it's a slightly different scenario, I apologize. I'm just trying to let you know what was working for me and what I've read about in my studies of this. So. Um, I hope this helps some of you. Um, I know that they've made things very confusing when it comes to, you know, how you upgrade. As some people are saying, oh, well, you need to sign up so you can get an upgrade. Well, not really. You can just get this tool that will put the, uh, that should be able to put this stuff on different media or just allows you to upgrade. Um, and what's odd is, when I went to try to search for for upgrading again, I wasn't able to as quickly find this tool. So maybe they've not wanted that tool readily available anymore, but I have the link, and it's not a link to my server, it's a link to Microsoft's server. So, you know, crossing fingers that it will work for you. Um, anyway. <laughs>